Excuse me. Is this Suzanne Sugarbaker's office? Well, yes, it is. Ah. However, I don't really work here. Oh. I'm just waiting to apply for a job. There wasn't anyone around. The place needed dusting. Luckily, I carry a can of lemon pledge in my purse for just these kinds of emergencies. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Malone. Natalie Hollingsworth. So, I see she inherited the old man's office. Do you know Miss Sugarbaker? Oh, no, I knew her husband. When I found out the old man died and that his big old dumb beauty queen wife was coming to fill his seat, I said, Natalie, why wait until the body is cold? This is Washington and nobody else is going to. Get yourself over there and fill that vacuum. Seize this chance to mold somebody in your own image, put America right again, and kick a little butt. <laughs> Cafe mocha? <laughs> No, thank you. I'm not much of a coffee drinker. That's okay. I'm not much of a butt kicker. <laughs> I'm applying for receptionist. I've never had a job interview before. I've never even had a job before. Well, I worked at home. My husband's an assistant football coach for the Washington Redskins. Well, he was till about three months ago. <laughs> Thought he ran off with an interpretive halftime dancer outside. <laughs> It's ridiculous of me to be telling this to a total stranger. But I'm too humiliated to tell it to anybody I know. <laughs> Jerry and I were high school sweethearts. We've never been with anyone else. We've never even dated anyone else. So I guess he's going through this kind of midlife crisis thing and it's completely thrown our two boys who yesterday were suspended from junior high for wearing the devil's insignia on their clothes. <laughs> for a home-baked muffin? No, thank you. Anyway, now the bank's trying to repossess our house. Jerry says he can't send any more money until his girlfriend's silicone class action suit comes through. Excuse me, what was your name again? Is it Ginny? Jennifer. Jennifer. Listen, Jennifer, take my advice, dear. Just go home. Capitol Hill is no place for amateurs. I just came from the Virginia Men's Minimum Security Facility, where they are keeping Congressman Ed Sharkey, the man whom I served under for 14 years. A man who would never take a bribe in his life, but nobody around here gives a damn about that because I'm the one that has to put up with his selfish, deranged, horse-faced wife taking up all the conjugal visits. <laughs> It's so nice of you to visit your congressman. I never do anything nice for my congressman. Hello. I'm applying for the job of press secretary. <coughs> and you are? A sissy Emerson, formerly with the style section of the Post. Hi. I'm Jennifer Malone. Miss Sugarbaker isn't here yet. Why don't you take a seat? That was fun. I've never said anything like that before. <laughs> I'll tell you what I really need is a little something to mix my morning health nut drink in. Oh, well! <laughs> Here's a coffee mug. Yeah, thank you. Men are so stupid. <laughs> something wrong? No, I was just waiting for you to finish the sentence. No, I find that makes a very nice icebreaker, just as it is. <laughs> of course, if you'd like me to elaborate, I could talk about the pantyhose I'm wearing, which were purchased by my ex-boyfriend, who never really did catch on that those, those charts aren't accurate. <laughs> so now I'm walking around with a crotch at knee level, looking like a penguin trying to catch an elevator. <laughs> Speaking of which, I just saw poor old Bob Packwood on mine. <laughs> Gave him a little pat on the butt as I was getting off. <laughs> Nobody else saw it. He'll never be able to prove it. <laughs> That's disgusting. What is that stuff? Oh, pureed granola, bee pollen, vitamins. Gosh, smells just like liquor. <sighs> yeah, well, sometimes I use a little morning glory just to kill that health food taste. <laughs> uh, look, I am a little tired of everything, and I am drinking. But I'm not drunk, okay? <laughs> Care for a coaster? No, thank you. I made these myself out of typing paper and little tiny fingernail scissors. 
All right, then. What the hell? So, what time is this sugar baker person getting here, anyway? Well, I'm sure any minute now. She must be running late. Oh, of course she's running late. Everybody says she's stupid. Or she's a lesbian. I forget which. She's either stupid or she's a lesbian. Or she killed a man. No, well, you know, maybe that was somebody else. Oh, you know how it is, so many rumors. Yes, and so little time to check them all out. That couldn't be why you've lost your job at the Post. Actually, if you must know, the reason I lost my job was because Sally Quinn didn't invite me to her New Year's Eve party. That's when my name started appearing on all those loser lists. Of course, you know she makes up those lists herself. And they must be right, because here I am with the two of you. <laughs> Applying for the worst job in town, working for some old dead congressman's bimbo wife, drinking my bee pollen and granola out of a cup that says world's greatest golfer that obviously has a hair in it. It's about as low as it gets, isn't it? I am so ashamed. I have never in my life served anything with a hair in it. Excuse me! Excuse me! Hi. I'm Suzanne Sugarbaker. Oh, my goodness! You're here! I'm Jennifer Malone. I'm applying for receptionist. We spoke earlier on the phone. Oh, sorry I'm late, but we had to get my little girl Desiree enrolled in school. She's going to Sidwell Friends. You know, that's where Chelsea goes. <laughs> Excellent, excellent choice. And by the way, Miss Sugarbaker, I just want you to know we were all absolutely devastated over your husband's untimely death. Well, I'm not sure how untimely it was. He was 76. <laughs> anyway, there's no reason to be sad. He lived a wonderful life and never suffered unless I wanted him to. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm Sissy Emerson, and I'm applying for the job of press secretary, or lint picker, or dog walker, or whatever you have. <laughs> I'm not proud, obviously, or I wouldn't be here. Excuse me, Miss Sugarbaker, but I would like to apologize for that insensitive remark. Some of us are extremely excited about the possibility of working for you. Well, whatever. <laughs> oh, by the way, I had to let the air out of somebody's tire who was parking in Ray's old space. Now, it was a blue Chevrolet with a little handicap sticker in the back. If anyone calls about you, tell them not to park there again. That's our spot. You let the air out of a handicapped person's tire? Yes, I did. <laughs> you know they have their own parking spaces now, so they certainly don't have any business pulling in the dead people's spots. <laughs> anyway, my brother Jim here is handicapped, too. He's mentally retarded. Oh, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to say developmentally challenged, but we don't bother with that silly stuff. We think it's a hell of a lot harder to be retarded, don't we, darling? Shouldn't cuss, Suzanne. I know, you're right. Nails me every time. <laughs> Isn't that charming? <laughs> By the way, I'm Natalie Hollingsworth, administrative assistant. As you can see, I have 14 years of experience. Oh, well, I don't need to see any resumes. If y'all want these jobs, you can have them. Are you serious? Well, of course. I'm just keeping Ray's seat warm as a favor to the governor until they can hold an election back in Georgia. Not that I don't intend to do a bang-up job. <laughs> Whenever I'm representing my home state, whether it's in a beauty pageant or, you know, Something like this. The qualities I look for in myself and everyone else around me are team spirit, pride in personal appearance, and a great big old sparkly smile. Excuse me, but I think I'm gonna need a little more breakfast. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, Jim. Wh what's the date of that election, anyway? Tuesday, May 9th. The man is a human calendar. Never forgets an anniversary or a birthday. Though he did get a little confused this year and took the Christmas tree down on the 23rd. It was dry. I know it was, darling. I just like to kid you. Oh, he's a total safety net. He even went through my lingerie drawers and reinforced all the metal hooks on my bras. I made him stronger. You sure did, precious, and I'm a better woman for it. Anyway. Jim makes these wonderful ceramic coasters and spoon rests, which we're hoping you will soon be able to purchase in the Congressional Gift Store. The proceeds, of course, will go to his school. Do you see these, Nadine? Uh, it's Natalie, and, uh, no, I didn't. Oh, these are lovely. <laughs> lovely? Are you kidding? They're a heck of a lot more than that. They're handy as hell. Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot. While I was waiting, I took some phone messages. Somebody from the White House called and said the president wants you to go jogging with him. You're kidding. How can you forget something like that? Well, I was in the middle of dusting and it kind of scared me. I didn't know if it was a joke or what. 
Well, it doesn't matter. I can't go. I don't jog. <sighs> Why not? Because I'm very voluptuous. I mean, there's enough stuff going on just when I walk. If I jog, I might take out a couple of Secret Service agents. You know, I heard Hillary threw something the other day. Is that true? Of course it's true. It was either a lamp or a sofa. Maybe it was a party. I just know it had something to do with how she's secretly running the country. sheep farmers who've called three times to complain that jets flying over Dobbins Air Base are interfering with the mating habits of their sheep. So what do they want from me? Well, apparently it's in your district. Listen, I'm sure there's a lot of mating habits that are not going well in my district, but <laughs> it's none of my business, okay? Anyway, if I start helping sheep, the next thing you know, cows will be calling. <laughs> ah! Knows for humor, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm sorry. For a moment there, I was overcome by a deeply felt and seemingly insurmountable sense of futility, but I'm fine now. <laughs> you know, whenever my little girl does it, Ray and I get down or depressed or something, we just. <clears throat> oh. We just get out this old Jennifer Holliday record. You know, the one from Dream Girls? Oh. I took her to see it when she was a baby, and she was just crazy about it. Then we did it as part of our talent at a mother-daughter beauty contest and just brought the house down. <laughs> now, whenever we're feeling a little bit low, we just slap that sucker on the stereo and lip sync the hell out of it. You should try it sometime. I'm telling you, it'll pick you up like that. <sighs> well, that's a very good tip. Did you hear that, ladies? Thank you. Yes, that's very useful. <laughs> Representative Sugarbaker's office, the new receptionist speaking. Okay, I'll tell her. That was the producer of Crossfire. He's sending a car for you at three. Oh, Crossfire? Why the hell are you going on that? Well, they said it's because I'm the newest member of Congress, but I think it has something to do with my being so attractive. <laughs> I mean, these Washington shows could use a little glamour. I don't want to be unkind, but as good looks go, this is a bad-looking town. I mean, have you ever been to some of those Congressional Wives luncheons? Some of these women are still walking around wearing bubble haircuts and dickies. <laughs> Excuse me, but I think that's a really bad idea. I mean, you go on Crossfire, and they're going to start asking you those questions like, oh, do you pay Social Security taxes on your maid? Well, I just pay her cash. What she does with it is her own business. <laughs> Oh, please. Now, that's going to be in every paper in the country. Sapphire will tear you apart. I don't think so. I don't think she even takes the paper. <laughs> who are you talking about? I'm talking about my maid, Sapphire. Who are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about Bill Sapphire, the columnist. Oh. You have a black maid named Sapphire? <laughs> yes, I do. Are you aware that that is a racial stereotype? Like Amos and Andy? Look, I can't help what it is. Sapphire's her damn name, and she's too old to change it now. E excuse me, but can I talk to you alone for a minute? Oh, all oh, right. But I gotta find somebody to do my makeup and hair. I sure don't want that $2 guy Ross Perot uses. He's always bragging about the price. He looks like a damn leprechaun. Which reminds me, where's all those C-SPAN cameras everybody's always talking about? Well, those are on the floor of the house. Well, somebody needs to tell them that I prefer to be shot from the left in extremely soft lighting with a very thin layer of cheesecloth over the lens. Oh, that reminds me, Jim. We gotta return that Mr. Smith goes to Washington tape. We were looking at that the other night, and that Jimmy Stewart is just as cute as a button. <laughs> huh? Obviously, you don't know that he used to whip those boys of his unmercifully. I thought that was Bing Crosby. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, then, uh, oh, it was Jimmy Stewart that did not have any friends. <laughs> or maybe that was Martha Stewart. <laughs> yes, sir, maybe that was Martha Washington. <laughs> She was a lesbian, right? Listen, 
I want to explain why you can't go on Crossfire. Have you ever heard of the Donner Party? <laughs> no. Doesn't mean I won't invite it, though. I get lots of invitations. <laughs> Actually, uh, the Donner Party was this group of settlers who traveled way out west and, well, they got all bogged down in the snow in the mountains. Anyway, the real horror of their story is not that they were forced to eat their dead friends and relatives, but rather that when they got back, the press said that they enjoyed it. <laughs> Following me here? You know, Valerie, have you ever thought about teasing your hair? I mean, I think it would help us to give it a little bit of poof right there in the front. Thank you. That's another good tip. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that when we're dealing with the media, we have to be very, very careful. You see, Washington is the only town in America where the appearance of something is much more important than the reality. For instance, if you go into a public restroom and you come out too soon, you didn't wash your hands. If you stay in too long, you've molested someone. If you stay in there just the right amount of time, you're slick. <laughs> oh, you know what I hate? What? It's those huge, round toilet paper dispensers they got in there now. I mean, I just want a nice little handy roll of paper. I certainly don't want to have to be cranking up a damn Ferris wheel. Excuse me. Representative DeLay wants to know if Miss Sugarbaker will be needing any floor time. Not now! OK, I'll take that as a no. I'm sorry. I did get a little carried away with my enthusiasm. I want to show you something. The man that I used to work for Congressman Ed Sharkey, one of the most decent, honest, well-built men you could ever meet. <laughs> and now, a third of his stomach sits in a jar on my dresser. Oh, my gosh. Was he in that Donner party? <laughs> no, he was in Washington. And this is what they did to him. You know, Valerie, just call me Natty. OK, Natty. Uh, I think you're a little over the top on this now, okay? Have you seen your gynecologist lately? Because I think you might be about a court law on estrogen. You know, you might just want to stop in there and get your tank topped off. Isn't there anything we can say to stop you from going on this TV show? I'm sorry, Natty. One of the first things you'll learn about me is that I always keep my commitments. Okay, now, since you're all here, what do you think of this? I think that's a little too flashy for Washington. Flashy? Doesn't even have any sequins on it. You wear that and Sally Quinn's gonna have a field day. Who is this Sally Quinn person anyway? She's married to the man who used to be the editor of the Washington Post. She's kind of like a um, retired base commander's wife who refuses to give up her husband's position and continues to patrol the compound in an armed Chrysler minivan looking for trouble. That's a very good analogy, Emerson. I know. I think an artery must have broken loose in my brain. Oh, I love that one. Finally, someone with taste. You know, I like this girl. What's your name again? Jennifer Malone. Mm. I love sequins. Mm. I love your house, I love your clothes, I love everything. Who would have thought my first day of work and I get to go on a field trip? <laughs> well, you're the ones who followed me home. I mean, it's not like you're not welcome, but I, I don't think I really need this much supervision. Oh, it's just that... Our jobs are very important to us, and we just don't want to see you get started off on the wrong foot. I mean, because once you do, the press will never let up on you. Wait a minute, please. This is not going to be that Donner Party thing again, is it? <laughs> it's just that there is no such thing as a little mistake in Washington. Even the tiniest little thing can be made into a great big thing. I mean, it doesn't matter that George Bush was never mystified by a supermarket scanner or that Bill Clinton's haircut never held up any airplanes. All that matters is that it's repeated over and over again until it becomes fact and or it sells enough newspapers and the retractions are printed on page 78. You tell her, Emerson, you're a reporter. It's true. Look what they did to poor old Betty Ford. For 40 years, they told the world that she was a cold, brittle, humorless woman. And then on the day they buried her, they stood atop her grave and said, oh, by the way, she was really very warm and funny. <laughs> it was Pat Nixon. <laughs> oh, what's the difference? <laughs> The difference is, Pat Nixon is the one who died, and Betty Ford is the one who has the clinic where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the press, I'll tell you who I'm sick and tired of hearing about. It's that Dan Rather and Connie Chung. Okay, so they're trying to have a baby together. Fine, just have the damn baby and quit talking about it. <laughs>
Well, I see there's nothing more we can do here. <laughs> I would say break a leg, but I have a feeling it's just not necessary. <laughs> Don't you worry, Natty. I intend to do us all proud. <laughs> Now, live from our nation's capital, Crossfire. Today's guest representative, Suzanne Sugarbaker. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Mike Kinsley from the left. And I'm John Sununu from the right. Our guest today is the newest member of Congress, Suzanne Sugarbaker of Georgia. She'll be filling her late husband's house seat until an election can be held later this year. Look at that big monkey. What the hell is she doing? Nobody shows breasts like that in Washington. Nobody has breasts like that in Washington. <sighs> this town hasn't seen a pair of boobs like that since Haldeman and Ehrlichman. Miss Sugarbaker, welcome. Oh, please call me Suzanne. <laughs> All right, Suzanne. Here we are, Suzanne, coming up on some major bills. Your vote could prove crucial on any number of issues, yet your own political affiliation is completely unknown. Could you comment on that? Yes, well, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the size of my hair. I usually wear it much bigger than this. What was the question again? Your political affiliation. Oh, yeah, well, it's true, I don't really have one. I just sort of decide how I feel about each issue as it comes along. I mean, that's the way they do it in Miss America. There's actually no point in planning ahead because you're just going to have to draw a question out of a jar anyway. Well, if you haven't thought about the issues pending, how about some of the issues that have already been decided? For example, gays in the military. Oh, well, personally, I think that homosexuals have as much right to kill and be killed as anyone else. Of course, I really wouldn't want to leave the beauty salon shorthanded. Is that your answer? I think so. Unless I could have more time. What could she possibly be thinking? Probably that she can make up for this during the talent portion. Suzanne, what about those expensive junkets that lobbyists provide for certain members of Congress? Would you be tempted to vote a certain way if someone gave you a gift? Listen, men have been giving me gifts since I was 18, but only a handful have made it to the promised land if you get my drift. <clears throat> yes, I think we do. But speaking of conflicts of interest, we understand you tried to sell some of your brother's craft items in the house gift store this morning. Do you really see no conflict of interest in that either? I beg your pardon. Well, Suzanne, it would appear that you were trying to make a profit from a federally funded enterprise. No, just doing a good deed. See, my brother makes these nice little ceramic spoon rests, and I just thought we could make a little extra money for his school. So you weren't just trying to make a fast buck? Certainly not. Why on earth would I come all the way to Washington just to steal a little poorly run knick-knack shop from the federal government? <laughs> Get real. I mean, that'd be like me trying to take over a dinky little lemonade stand. Anyway, my five husbands left me plenty of money. And I'm sure that I'll marry again. Or as my grandmother used to say, honey, if you ever need a million dollars, just remember, you're sitting on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm afraid this microphone's just been swallowed up by my cleavage. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ha! I bet that little Katie Kirk never had this problem, huh? <laughs> Are we on? Are we still on? Huh? Are we on? Yes, you're still on, you big monkey. You know, it's becoming increasingly clear to me that we're not just some loosely banded together group of losers anymore. This feels bigger than that. I, I think we're all participating in some sort of cosmic olympics and are now apparently all strapped down spread eagle no blindfold on the big luge heading for hell representative sugarbaker's office no she's not giving any more interviews <laughs> who am i uh well i'm her press secretary no i do not care to give my name if you were a press secretary, would you give your name? <laughs> I thought not. Goodbye. Gosh, I can't believe. I've never even had a traffic ticket. Now I'm involved in something called Knick-Knack Gate. <laughs> OK, that was the GAO. There's at least 30 congressmen calling for a full investigation and or resignation, not to mention the Journal, the Times, and the Post. And don't forget, Penthouse wants to know if she has any wedding night videos. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like I went out and whacked some ice skater on the knee. 
Excuse me, but attempting to profit from a government enterprise is a federal offense, and we are all right now, at this very moment, unindicted co-conspirators. Oh gosh, that's absolutely terrifying. It's also kind of exhilarating. <laughs> Well, I guess all we can hope for now is that Janet, I just really haven't met the right man yet, Reno, will have mercy on us. Listen to this. Considering the flamboyant, zaftig Miss Sugarbaker's ample cleavage and her breathless assurances that she is, quote, too rich to steal, it was difficult to tell if she was playing Miss Kitty or Miss Ellie from the Beverly Hillbillies. You know, basically, there are four things they really hate in this town. The newly rich, happy people, movie stars, and hicks. You never had a chance. <laughs> what the hell does Zoptic mean? Sneaky way of calling you fat. It means you're a big old soft girl. I bet they'd never call a man Zoptic. Actually, you're a big old soft flamboyant girl. Oh, please. In Washington, anyone who doesn't wear support hose is flamboyant. <laughs> this is not a scandal. I mean, look at that Prince Charles over in England. Now, I'm sorry, but I think what he said is a whole lot worse than what I said. What are you talking about? I'm just making a comparison, Natty. The man apparently told that Camilla Parker, what's your name, that he wants to be a tampon. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I think once you said something like that, you give up your right to be the king of England. <laughs> Suzanne. It, may I call you Suzanne? Please. You know, since coming here, you have... Hmm. Diminished all women as sexual commodities, slandered homosexuals, insulted blacks, and bragged about being rich. Now, while it is true that you did not express a desire to be a tampon, I fail to see how that's a cause for rejoicing or a negation of your other comments. Look, I told you they wouldn't believe I was just doing a good deed. So I tried to explain to them that I have too much money to want to take over a knick-knack shop. Now, what is wrong with that? That's the truth. Oh, the truth. Please, nobody tells the truth in Washington unless they're in an underground parking lot and terminally ill. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I thought being rich was the American dream. You know, something to aspire to. My goodness, rich people are the ones who built this country. At least they built most of their really nice stores. Listen, Debbie, you are my last chance for success in this town, and I have no intention of going down in a ball of flames with you. No, I want you to stop saying stupid stuff like that. You are making my ulcer bleed. You are sucking all the air out of me. I can't even breathe anymore. Malone, get me a glass of water. Do you want lemon in it? Just get it! All right. Now, listen. The first thing we have to address is damage control. I want to get a statement out to all the major news outlets by noon. Then later, Emerson, you will hold a press conference, and I will follow up with a focus group. Don't bother. What do you mean? I mean, that won't be necessary. Uh, look, I'm really sorry for disappointing you all and embarrassing my home state and making a fool of myself. Um, I never meant to hurt any of you or the memory of my husband. I'm, I'm just not cut out for Washington. Where are you going? Home. To pack. Mama? What is it, sweet pea? I can't sleep. Oh, well, you come on, climb up here in your mama's big bed and let me rub your back. That's my girl. Tell me a story. I already told you a story tonight. I didn't like that one. I don't like the donor party. <laughs> You're right. I shouldn't have told that to you. It's not appropriate for children, but I didn't have time to find another one today. I wish I could be more like you, Mama. You're never scared. Well, what are you scared of, Cupcake? School. I'm afraid nobody's gonna like me. Oh, well, first of all, anyone who wouldn't like you wouldn't be worth knowing. And secondly, I'll give you some gifts to take in tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe we should go back home. Mm, I'm ashamed to say I've just been laying here thinking the same thing. You know, you got me pegged all wrong. I get scared, too. What are you scared of? Oh, growing old, losing you, being forced to have a meeting with sheep farmers. <laughs> anyway, I guess the important thing to remember is no matter how wonderful you are, there's always somebody who's not going to like you. And sometimes it's exactly because of how wonderful you are. What's the matter, Jim? 
I can't sleep. She told me that story about the Donner Party. <laughs> Cream. I never spill anything, Suzanne. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget you're not normal. <laughs> hey, Suzanne, when I rode the bus home today, I went by that Lincoln Monument, just like Mr. Smith did in that movie. You did? He means the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. He was sitting in his big old chair. Boy, it looked like he was looking right at me. And there was some dirt on the bottom, so I took out my handkerchief and wiped it off. <laughs> And this policeman said, why are you doing that? And I said, <laughs> I forgot what I said. Darn. Well, did you say because this is my monument too? Maybe. Would that be good? That would be very good. I don't think I said it. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make it any less true. You know what I think? I think you just said on something very important, Jim. Something I almost forgot about. What do you mean, Mama? I mean, I think it's time to put on the old red girl! Yay! Let's do the whole routine! Uncle Jim, you play drums. Okay, but now you gotta start towards the end because I gotta go to work tomorrow and you gotta go to school. I thought we were leaving. Leaving? Are you kidding? We're the sugar baker women and nobody runs us out of town. Isn't that right, Jim? I'm not a woman. Don't be so technical. I thought we just unloaded this stuff on Friday. That's correct. That's because we came to work for someone who we just thought was dumb. Then we found out she was insane, so now everybody's leaving, okay? <laughs> Emerson, where have you been? We could have used some help around here. I'm looking for a job. And yes, I know my ham is out, but what I was gonna wear this morning got burned up in a dryer fire, okay? I can tack that right up for you. Oh, sure. You're just trying to sew one of those devil's insignias on me. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe that at one time I used to be an award-winning journalist before they hired this very serious girl from Radcliffe named Hadley, who doesn't drink at all. <laughs> now here I am applying to be a courier delivering lab specimens. In other words, a urine sample girl. <laughs> Gosh, I'm gonna miss this place. I know we haven't been here very long, but I just love being a career gal. The sights, the sounds, even the rough language. I just don't know if I can go back home again and be a housewife. Well, who says you have to? Miss Sugarbaker, what are you doing here? Let's just say I'm back and I'm bad, and this time I'm staying for good. <laughs> Put down those boxes, boys, and start unpacking. We got work to do. Oh, man, you know, this is getting just a little bit ridiculous. Oh, pipe down. 
woman has the right to change her mind. Now, you just do a good job, and later on, at the end of the day, you can pick out a couple of the girls here and have sex with them. Big whoa. Well, I think that's pretty much rock bottom for me. Are you serious about this? You're really staying? That's right. What about knick-knack gate and all that other stuff in the press? Well, you still I get to speak on the house floor, right? How much time do I get? I think three minutes. All right. Call them up. Tell them I'll take it. Then call the president. Tell them we have a date, too. For what? To go jogging. <laughs> I thought you didn't jog. That was before they called me fat. <laughs> Suzanne Chiggerbaker. And before we begin, I would like to apologize for the size of my hair. I usually wear it much bigger than this. But this lady at the house beauty shop said this was as big as she can get it. Can you believe that? And this is supposed to be our nation's capital. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Six-Man Man. Now, I told you people that my left profile is my best one, okay? You're supposed to be over there. <laughs> The gentlewoman from Georgia has the floor. Okay, just keep filming, but I'm telling you right now, you're blowing the shot. <laughs> anyway, okay. <clears throat> Action. Hi, I'm Suzanne Sugarbaker, and I'm new in town. Now, I've been told Washington is a place where you have to fit in. Well, I'm a person who likes to stand out. And I guess the truth is, I care a lot more about what Sapphire Jones thinks than somebody named Bill Sapphire. Now, I've said a lot of things this week that are politically incorrect, but then, so am I. <laughs> my maid is black, my daughter's adopted, my brother's retarded, and I myself am five times married, fat, not softic, big mouth, southern, and rich. <laughs> Newly rich, which if you ask me is the best kind to be because it means you earned it yourself. <laughs> so I guess you could say I'm a little bit different. But from what I know about history, which is not a lot, <laughs> that's what being an American is all about. The right to be different, to think differently, act differently, and say different things. Kind of like Jimmy Stewart and that Mr. Smith goes to Washington. <laughs> I mean, maybe you people here have forgotten what it's like to be different, to not run around in a little herd reading all the same newspapers and talking to all the same people at all the same dinner parties and trying so damn hard to impress each other. And then you book yourselves on those, what do you call those things, journalistic round tables so that you can sit around and talk about the gossip that you yourselves have been spreading. <laughs> like Mr. Smith said, if only you thought as much about being honest as you do about being smart. But of course, we all know if Mr. Smith came to Washington today, you people would beat the hell out of him. <laughs> Which is too bad, because sometimes good people really do come here to do good things. Like my brother, who was dusting off the Lincoln Memorial the other day, <laughs> and reminded me that this is our capital, not just yours, and that these monuments here belong to all of us. They don't belong to the Washington Post. They don't belong to the Wall Street Journal. They don't belong to the New York Times or even to Congress. They belong to all Americans. I'm sorry, but the gentlewoman from Georgia's time is up. I'm not finished. OK, you can come in for the close-up now. <laughs> and by all Americans, I mean people with sheep farms, little people, movie stars, and hicks. Your time has expired. Next speaker, please. Happy people, rich people, black people named Stuffer. People on Dolly Quinn's loser list. Will the House Sergeant please come forward and remove the gentlewoman from Georgia? People who bake muffins. Yes. People who drink too much. Order, order. The gentlewoman from Georgia is not finished. <laughs> People who tell the truth! People from the South! People from the Southern Party! People in Cleveland!
I'm sorry. Representative Sugarbaker is in conference right now. Who am I? Well, I'm Sissy Emerson, Executive Director of uh, Press Relations. That's E-M-E-R-S-O-N. You can put it all in caps, honey. Hey, Sugarbaker, can I come in for a minute? Oh, sure. I was just enjoying one of your muffins. You know, I believe these are even better than that little dummy. Thanks. I just don't understand where all these damn dollies are coming from. Though. Oh, that's my hobby. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that after hearing your speech yesterday, I felt so inspired, I went home and I ripped my two sons Menendez brothers poster right off their bedroom wall. And I told them, I'm in charge now. Well, isn't that fun? And who is this again? It doesn't matter. I just wanted you to know I think you're wonderful. And I know it isn't true, but if you were a lesbian, I'd be proud to be your lover. And I'm not even gay. Well, that's enough of that kind of talk. <laughs> you better be running along now. I got appointments, you know. I understand. You're my hero. Heroin. Even better. You know she worships you. Yeah, well, she's a real cute girl, but just a little too happy to be at the party. Well, you seem to be having an effect on everyone around here. I noticed Emerson didn't even put any morning glory on her granola today. Oh, shut up, Natty. It's nothing, really. It's just that, well, I woke up this morning and my hands weren't shaking, so I called 911, and they said it sounded to them like I might be sober. <laughs> so I thought, what the hell, I'll give it a whirl. And I... Uh, well, I would like to apologize for calling you a... a big monkey. <laughs> the truth is, you're not a big monkey. You're an 800-pound gorilla. Gosh, that's the White House on the phone right now. They want to know if you're still going jogging in the morning with the president. Yep, tell them I'll be there. Oh, this is so exciting! I still don't get it. I thought you don't jog. Let's just say I got a secret weapon. <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe, but, well... It's different! <laughs> Oh, 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 there he is, there he is. Oh.